chemical reaction can be defined simply as the interaction and chemical transformation of the atoms and molecules of usually two or more substances to form a new substance or substances. The substances that take part in a chemical reaction are known as the reactants, while the new substances formed after a chemical reaction has occurred are known as the products. A chemical reaction results in the rearrangement of the atoms and molecules of the reactants to form products with new atomic and molecular orientations. This is achieved through the making or breaking of bonds between the constituting atoms. It is worth noting here that in a chemical reaction, atoms of one element do not change into those of another element. It is also worth noting that atoms do not disappear from the reactant mixture or appear from elsewhere. Chemical reactions are different from the physical changes in that the former leads to the creation of new substances while the latter merely alters the state of the original substance without changing its chemical composition. A very common everyday example of a chemical change would be the burning of paper. Paper which is made up mostly of cellulose fibers when burned creates a new substance in the form of black ash also known as carbon and also releases a gas known as carbon dioxide and water in the form of water vapor. There are many different forms of chemical reactions that take place in nature. These can be categorized into five major types, namely combination reaction, decomposition reaction, displacement reaction, double displacement reaction, oxidation and reduction reaction or simply redox reaction. In this video, we'll be demonstrating a few laboratory examples of the first type of reaction, which is combination reaction. Combination reaction is a type of chemical reaction in which a single product is formed by the combination of two or more reactants. So combination reactions can be generally represented by the equation A plus B gives C. To perform some experiments in combination reaction, we'll be needing the following a 250ml beaker, calcium oxide powder, spatula, laboratory thermometer, zinc granules, dilute sulfuric or dilute hydrochloric acid, a 250 Erlenmeyer flask or a round bottom flask with a tight fitting one hole rubber cork and a straight delivery tube about 15 centimeters long a gas jar with glass lid, pneumatic trough, a beehive shelf, a match box, magnesium ribbon, a pair of tongs, red and blue litmus papers, concentrated ammonia solution, concentrated hydrochloric acid, a cylindrical hollow glass tube about 20 to 30 centimeters long with both ends open and two rubber corks to fit in the mouths of the cylindrical tube. Some absorbent cotton. Retort stand with a finger clamp. Two droppers or pipettes. Two watch glasses or petri dishes. Before the start of the experiments, make sure to follow all necessary safety precautions in handling chemicals and fire. Wear lab coat, safety goggles and gloves. Calcium oxide powder is corrosive to the skin. Dilute acids, even though dilute, are also still corrosive. Hydrogen gas is highly flammable. The flame of burning magnesium could cause eye and skin damage if viewed directly or touched. To perform this experiment, take the 250ml borosilicate glass beaker and fill it with approximately 100 to 150ml with water. Introduce the laboratory thermometer and record the temperature of the water. Now, 
Add a few spatulas of calcium oxide to the water in the beaker and stir briefly. Wait a few seconds for the reaction to commence and then record the temperature of the solution again. You can also touch the side of the beaker with the palm of your hands. When quick lime is added to the water, an exothermic combination reaction occurs resulting in the production of heat which is reflected by an increase in the reading of the thermometer. You can also feel the increase in temperature in the form of a slight warmth when the beaker is touched with your hands. The combination reaction that occurs can be summarized in the form of a chemical equation as shown here. Calcium oxide with the formula CaO reacts with water which is H2O to form calcium hydroxide which has the formula CaOH2. The reaction is exothermic and releases heat since only one product that is calcium hydroxide is formed as a result. This example reaction can be classified as a type of combination reaction. Calcium hydroxide is commonly used in whitewashing of the walls in houses. In fact, the major component of water-based distemper paints is calcium hydroxide or slaked lime. This in turn reacts with the carbon dioxide present in atmospheric air to produce calcium carbonate, which is the chemical name for construction materials such as limestone and marble. The reaction can be represented as shown here. Calcium carbonate gives that shiny texture and finish to whitewashed walls. To perform this second experiment and combination reaction, take a piece of the magnesium ribbon about 7 to 10 centimeters long. Hold one end of this ribbon with a pair of tongs. Now light the other end of the ribbon using a lighter or match stick until it starts to ignite. Collect the white residue formed in a petri dish or watch glass. Test the acidic or basic nature of the residue by touching it with a strip of blue litmus and red litmus papers moistened with water. Record your observations. When ignited, magnesium ribbon reacts with the oxygen in air and burns with a dazzling white flame. Note here that unlike in the reaction of calcium oxide with water, which is spontaneous, the reaction of magnesium with oxygen requires an external energy input in the form of heat, in this case the flame from the lighter or matchstick. Once all the magnesium ribbon had burned, the combination reaction stops, leaving behind a white residue. The white residue, when tested with litmus paper, turns the red litmus blue, indicating that the residue is basic in nature. The reaction of magnesium with oxygen can be summarized in this simple chemical equation. The white residue formed at the end of the reaction is magnesium oxide. You will learn in your chapter on metals and nonmetals that metallic oxides and metallic hydroxides are generally basic in nature. This is the reason why the red litmus turned blue when in contact with the residue. Had it been acidic in nature, the blue litmus would have turned red, which was not the case. The reaction of magnesium with oxygen is also classified as a type of combination reaction because a single product is formed by the chemical combination of two reactants. To perform this experiment, we first need to prepare the hydrogen gas. To do this, first take the Erlenmeyer flask or round bottom flask 
introduce about 50 to 100 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid into the flask. Meanwhile, take the rubber cork with one hole and introduce the delivery tube into the hole like so. Allow about 5 cm length of the tube to protrude from each end of the hole. Moisten the rubber cork with water for an airtight seal. Next, introduce a few pieces of zinc granules into the flask containing the acid and quickly cover the mouth tightly with the rubber cork. Allow a minute or so for the reaction to commence in the flask. After 30 seconds to a minute, hold the gas jar in the inverted position over the end of the tube in such a way that a few centimeters of the tube goes into the mouth of the gas jar. Collect the hydrogen gas in the inverted gas jar for about 1-2 to two minutes, by which time the jar would have been fully filled with the hydrogen gas. Now cover the mouth of the gas jar with a glass lid while still holding the jar inverted. Remove the reaction flask away at a safe distance. Next, light a matchstick or splinter. Remove the glass lid from the gas jar and introduce the burning splinter at the mouth of the gas jar. Record your observation. When a burning splinter is introduced near the mouth of the gas jar filled with hydrogen gas, the gas immediately ignites explosively with a characteristic pop sound. Once the gas inside the jar had completely burned, you can see a hazy layer of condensation forming on the inner walls of the jar. Hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen present in atmospheric air to produce water. Just as in the burning of magnesium ribbon, this reaction also requires an external energy input in the form of heat, in this case the burning splinter, for the reaction to commence. The chemical reaction involved can be represented by the equation shown here. The condensate formed on the inner walls of the gas jar is nothing but tiny droplets of water formed as a result of the combination reaction between the two gases. This reaction is also an example of a combination reaction because a single product is formed, in this case, water. To perform this experiment, first bring the two chemicals, ammonia and hydrochloric acid, to the experiment table, preferably inside the confines of a fume cupboard or in a well-ventilated area. Next, take the cylindrical tube and fasten it on a retort stand using a finger clamp. Now, take two cotton balls in two watch glasses or petri dishes and add several drops of ammonia and hydrochloric acid to each cotton ball using the droppers. Introduce the two cotton balls, one on each end of the glass tube, at the same time. Stopper the open ends of the tube with the rubber corks, also at the same time. Allow the setup to remain undisturbed and observe closely. As soon as you introduce the two cotton balls into the tube and secure the rubber stoppers, you will observe a thin white cloud ring starting to form somewhere towards the cotton ball dipped in hydrochloric acid in the glass tube. As the reaction progresses, this cloud ring increases in area, travels closer to the hydrochloric acid cotton ball, and eventually begins to spread throughout the inside of the tube. The white fumes are more concentrated towards the hydrochloric acid side because the fumes of ammonia are lighter than those of hydrochloric acid and therefore travel comparatively faster and thereby moves quicker towards the hydrochloric acid. The fast-moving ammonia fumes also create an air current, bringing about a beautiful circular convection flow in the white cloud that is formed.
combination reaction between ammonia fumes and hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride fumes can be represented by the following chemical equation. The white fumes formed in the tube is actually solid ammonium chloride composed of microscopic particles of the same, creating the illusion that it is in the gaseous state. If you allow the fumes to remain long enough in the tube, they will eventually settle down and form white deposits of ammonium chloride crystals on the inner walls of the tube. This experiment is also a classic example of combination reaction because only one product is formed from the combination of two reactant molecules. So in this video, we have demonstrated four common and well-known examples of the type of reaction known as combination reaction, wherein a single product is formed by the chemical combination of two or more reactants. In separate videos, I have covered the other types of chemical reactions as well. Make sure to check out those videos too. The links are in the description below. So this was all about combination reaction. If you found this video helpful in your studies or teaching, then please do consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with friends, colleagues and anyone for whom this video might be relevant. Thanks for watching.